just to give you guys a sense where we are our spectrum of economic systems. Remember the spectrums in terms of how much power the government has in the economy. All the way on the right, we have a pure free market. That's what we learned about yesterday, um, where competition and profit drive the economy. The government stays out of it as much as possible. Um, under capitalist free market economies like the United States has, the goal is to make as much wealth for businesses and business owners as possible, kind of leaving the workers out of it. Today, we're gonna look at the opposite side of the spectrum. Here, it's labeled as a planned economy. We're calling these um, command economies. It's when the government has full power to make all economic decisions. And then we'll look at mixed economies in the middle where most countries have converged because the extremes are really, really hard to handle. All right. Um, if you were in class yesterday, you already have this written down, so I'm just showing y'all again where we are on the chart that you guys started yesterday. We started the free market, so today we're going to start with command economies in red and then also look at mixed economies in purple. All right, first thing we're going to cover is a command economy. I will drop the slide in the chat too, just in case. Um, but I would like for you guys to get ready to take notes on this. I'll tell you which parts of it to write down because they don't look like regular key points. Um, but this is part of what I want in your notebook. Um, they don't look like regular key points because I had to go through and kind of organize the information. Otherwise, it was just like a paragraph. So this is easier. Um, you already have the categories on the left and the definitions written down. So today what we are writing down is the table in red and the pros and cons on the bottom right. Um, and remember, don't write down everything. Write down main ideas, keywords, bullet points. If you are a visual person and not a words person, you can draw pictures, it's totally fine. So a command economy is when a government centrally plans all economic activity. If you understand that, you can stop writing there. If you need a little more detail in order to understand what that means, you can also note that this means that a central government, instead of businesses or individual private people like you or me, make all economic decisions with full power over how the economy runs. So that is the economic system because it describes the way that governments make economic choices for their state. Command economies, the governments make all of those choices. Um, what to produce, how to produce, for whom to produce. That's government choice. Right? Yesterday, when we learned about free markets, individuals make those choices, like businesses, in the supply and demand in the marketplace. Why would a government want full control? In order to answer that question, we need to think about an ideology. Remember a few days, I told you this word was going to be hard, so I'm repeating it a lot. So by the end of the semester, you guys will have a grasp of it. If you don't understand ideologies yet, it's OK, you will. Um, an ideology, remember, is a system of beliefs and values about what is best for the state. Um, and you can have a government take full power over the economy for a number of reasons. So this is not the only one, but the one that stands out in history is very significant is communism. If this is a new word for actually, everybody should write this down as an ideology that pairs with a command economy. Remember ideologies answer the question of like, why are we doing this to what end? What is our goal? Right? And under a communist command economy, the government takes full control over managing the economy in order to equally share resources among the people. So the goal for communism is to create an equal society. Equality is the goal. Um, you can remember it because like there are root words in here, right? Communism for the common good. And it pairs with a command economy. So very easy. 
communism, we're going to go through the history when you guys get into world history. It's a fascinating topic in its own right, and I like nerd out on it, so I'm not going to spoil that whole thing for you. But I'll give you like the mini version. And the mini version is this. Communism started off with a philosopher named Karl Marx who looked at the world and he like looked back at world history and he thought that like we think you know events and people drive history you know a king conquers this country and then that's an event and that's how things change and he thought no the thing that drives history is a conflict between the workers who toil and the rich people who just benefit from other people's work i'm simplifying a lot but that's the basic idea right so like you could have a rich guy who's already rich um, invest in a business. So he buys everything. It technically belongs to him. And then he kind of sits back and chills while a lot of people work really hard to make him a lot of money. Those people don't get a share of what they produce. They make an hourly wage, probably minimum wage, and it's probably not enough to live on. Karl Marx was like, well, that sucks. These workers are doing all of the work for society. They are valued the least they should get a share of their labor. It doesn't make sense for people with wealth to reap the benefits of everybody else's work. And then he went further. Like, if you really want to, like, geek out on this, it's not just about economics and, like, the rich exploiting the poor. It's also about the rich being able to create systems of ideas and laws them in power by keeping the poor from understanding that they have a common interest. Anyway, Marxism is fun to get into, and we will get into it next year, I promise. For now, the idea is just communism intends to create a society in which workers profit from their work, everybody gets a share of national resources, and in order to do that, you need a central government to direct all economic activity. Like, the free market doesn't allocate things perfectly evenly, right? <laughs> So the goal under communist societies is to create a society where all resources are owned by society as a whole rather than individuals. There is no your mine, there is just ours. In terms of values, this is a very collectivist, like equal dignity, equality type of ideology. Society meets its needs collectively. And this contrasts a lot with capitalism, right? Under capitalism, the goal is to make the business owner, so like the rich guy, a lot of money, and it ignores the workers. Communism flips it. It's like, no, the workers matter. Um, capitalism is very individualistic. Like, if I have money, I survive. If you don't have money, too bad for you. You should have worked harder. Communism is like, no, we should all provide for everybody as a society, as a group, right? important like warning sign about communism and it's like listed here in a little red like banner thing to the right of the column um communism has historically appealed to societies with super high inequality where like there are a ton of poor people very few very rich people or whose natural resources have been exploited by other states so communism has mostly been tempted attempted in places that like basically had been abused for a really, really, really long time, um, but also in places without a lot of resources to go around to begin with, which means that in practice, communism hasn't worked out very well. The original idea was like, you need to create wealth in society before transitioning into communism, but the countries that have made that transition did not take the step first to create, you know, Nobody plans revolutions like 10 years out. Okay, um, so for whom for communism under command economies is everybody equally shares in the fruits of their labor and the resources of their land. Um, this economic system has some benefits and some drawbacks, right? The benefits include this economy can respond fast in an emergency because one person is directing everything. So under a command economy, um, like when the coronavirus shutdowns happened here in the United States, it was kind of crazy because individual businesses closed and then some states did some crazy stuff and my computer just went blank. 
which is interesting. And it's coming back. Are y'all still here? Yes? No? Yeah. Okay, cool. Ooh, that was weird. Um, can you see my PowerPoint? I can't anymore. Yeah, I can see it. Oh, all right. Well, um, interesting. Is it on the same slide? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I will keep talking through that slide and then I will do this blind. Let's see if I can remember what's on my own slides. Um, all right. So in terms of pros, right? A command economy can react fast in emergencies because one person's making decisions. Um, and in terms of pros, people's basic needs are met. Um, a command economy can make sure everybody gets like enough to eat, for example. The drawbacks are that in practice, often command economies are paired with authoritarian governments, which don't give people a ton of rights, which is, you know, not great. In addition, um, in practice, they have not been successful. They tend to, like, if one person's trying to direct an entire economy, that person better be really good because if they make a mistake, people will starve to death. And that does tend to happen in history with command economies. So I'm going to pause here for questions. If you have them, you can drop them in the chat. Otherwise, I'm going to see if clicking ahead a slide is going to make everything break or not. I can't tell the slide changed. Oh no. Oh, disaster. Here, hang on. Okay, that should give you a second to organize your notes. And luckily, I dropped that slide into the chat. So if there's anything you haven't written down yet, while well, I am fixing things on my end, you can sum up your notes on command economies. Apologies for the interruption. I'll pop the next slide in the chat too, just in case. Okay. All right, so as you guys can imagine, um, we've covered two extremes of the spectrum of economic systems, right? We've seen what it's like when government has total control over everything. Um, and we've seen a government taking a very hands-off approach and just letting the market and business owners kind of do their thing. Okay, hopefully you guys can see, because I can see now. So I feel like if it's working for me, it can't be working for y'all. Um, anyway, so I wanna talk about mixed economies, right? This you don't have to write down unless it's useful for you. If it's useful for you, do write it down. Command economies. Give the government too much power to make all economic decisions. They can lead to abuse, authoritarian government, and fewer rights for the people. Also, people make mistakes, and if you have the guy in charge making bad economic decisions, you're in big, big trouble. Um, that happens in North Korea all the time, for what it's worth. There are famines. It's just like a thing. Um, on the opposite end of the spectrum, with a free market economy, there's not enough government power to regulate markets, um, which leads to abuse by business owners, exploitation of the working class, huge wealth inequality, and it, it's hard to keep society functioning when things are very, very unequal. So as a result, most states pick mixed economies as like the economic system to work with. Mixed economies combine some government authority to direct the economy with a lot of free market individual business ability to like start a business and make profit. Um, oh, please work. Yay. I'll drop the slide in your chat too. This is our last set of notes for today, I promise. And notes won't be quite this intense for like a while either. Mm -mm. 
Okay, so under mixed economies, governments make some economic decisions, usually to provide public services and businesses and individuals make others. So I'll give you a few examples, right? Um, government decisions could be regulations. So that could be making rules about what you have to pay workers. We have a minimum wage, for example. So like you can have a business, but you can't legally pay people less than $7.25 an hour in Texas. Um, you can have regulations for protecting the environment so that like chemical plants stop exploding, for example, that'd be great. You can have controls for worker safety. Um, Caesar, does it apply for minors? You know, I um, I think so. When I was in high school job and I got paid minimum wage and I feel like if there are any exceptions for children and I think that one of the reasons is actually that when you start paying children less than a legal wage then you very easily start exploiting children to work um I'll double check though because I don't know that that's true but I feel that it's true um okay so like the government could intervene in the economy in those ways like with regulations most often though when we're talking about mixed economies we're talking about redistributing wealth usually redistributing wealth means like um it's like the robin hood principle right like take from the rich give to the poor everybody does a little better but the rich are still rich that sort of thing um in terms of ideologies you know the the system of beliefs or ideas that answer the question of like, why are we doing this with our economy? What's the point? What's the goal? The key ideology to associate with a mixed economy is often socialism, which is what it sounds like. It promotes social goals to reduce inequality. So communism's like, we want to get rid of inequality. Everything must be equal. Socialism's like, Meh, let's have just a little less or a lot less. To do this, governments create regulations and taxation systems to fund some public goods like schools. So you tax everybody a certain amount, lots of people pay taxes, but if you tax the rich, 15% of a billion dollars is a lot more than 15% of my salary. So you can get a lot of revenue for the state that way, right? Um, with that revenue, the state can pay for things that we all use and need and benefit from as a society. And that varies depending on the kind of country. Um, the United States, for example, is very capitalist. We don't provide a lot of social services through taxation. We provide public schools, but we all know that they're not all equal. You know, they vary in quality and funding. We provide a fire department. That's nice. Police departments. It's pretty nice. I lived in France for a while. France, in addition to that, provides health care, like health care is free in France, which is kind of nice to live in a society where no one's just going to, you know, go in debt forever because of bills from health care. Um, they provide like unemployment insurance that's a little more generous than here. We had a presidential candidate this year, Andrew Yang, who was proposing a universal basic income. So like everybody gets a certain baseline amount of money just to live and then like we can build a society. So socialism looks different depending on where you're looking. But the basic idea is always to reduce inequality by regulating businesses and by having taxes pay for services that we all want and need. And Caesar says, haha, we don't have good really don't. Um, I think there's a chart that I can show you in a sec. Um, for the goals, then it's less inequality, social welfare. It values cooperation under socialist societies. There's a much more of a sense that like we really are all in this together and we're all kind of helping each other out. Um, and there are like a couple more key vocab words here. I don't know that you're going to use nationalized a lot this year, um, but just maybe it's good for you to know when a government runs certain industries, we say that they're nationalized. So like um, some states nationalize their natural resources like oil and then the state runs their oil and gas industry. Um, our 
military is nationalized, I guess. The military is technically a business, kind of. I don't know. I'm confusing myself. This is terrible. Anyway, pros and cons. Right? On the plus side, with mixed economies, you get less inequality, right? If you redistribute wealth, everybody ends up closer to the middle than in total free markets. On the downside, that means higher taxes for the wealthy. Cry me a little tiny river. Um, another pro, people's basic needs are met. So people tend not to just starve to death. On the downside, there's less individual incentive to create wealth. So that's like a very um, capitalistic sort of criticism. The idea being like, if people are desperate, they'll find a way to survive. And in finding a way to survive, then you know, maybe they create something that is good. Um, and then finally, regulations mean that workers and the environment are protected, but that also on the downside limits businesses and their ability to act to seek profit. Who has questions? Surely you have questions. If not, Be a vote. Who wants to live in which kind of society? Click like on the type of society you would most like to live with. Cesar voted fast. No surprise there. Cesar voted twice. <laughs> this is why democracy doesn't work. Okay. I see socialism is popular with the youth. And it kind of makes sense, right? Like, of all times, I think now is a good moment in history to look at the failings of the market and, you know, how it leaves people kind of on their own. 